Hey guys, what's up? Plastic Guy here, coming back with another figure review. And today we're taking a look at this brand new, re-released Invincible figure from Diamond Select Toys. Diamond Select initially released this Invincible figure probably more than a year ago now, back when the show first started. And yeah, when I first saw it, I just thought it looked a bit off. My biggest problem was the skin tone. I thought it looked really bad, and so it was a hard pass from me. And unfortunately, it meant that I had an invincible figure-sized hole in my collection because I absolutely loved the TV show. We're halfway through season two at the moment, we're in the mid-season break, and it's going great. I love the characters, the story's been really good so far, and I just love the over-the-top action. It is incredible, and so yeah, I absolutely love the show and I really wanted an invincible figure to accompany that. Unfortunately, just nothing was really catching my eye on eBay. I really wanted one of the early McFarlane Invincible figures that came out back with the comics, but they must be really rare. I've only came across two of the blue suited Invincible figures up on eBay, and they were super expensive. And I'm more of a fan of this classic yellow and blue suit, so that's what I was holding out for. And finally, Diamond Select have decided to re-release this initial figure with some slight improvements and some different accessories in with the packaging. So. I decided to pick it up, it's finally arrived and we need to take a closer look at this thing here on the channel. Before we do guys, let me know down in the comment section what you guys think of the Invincible TV show at the moment and if you have any Invincible figures in your collection. If you have the McFarlane figures, I'd love to know what you think of them. If you have the Diamond Select, let me know down in the comment section below. And let's not wait any longer, let's take a closer look at our new Diamond Select Invincible action figure. So let's do what we always do and take a closer look at the packaging. We have book and figure box set with exclusive flight stand, Invincible with a picture of Invincible himself and a 20 years logo down in the bottom right. Some nice background artwork images on here as well. Warning up at the top and Diamond Select Toys up at the top. On the side we have Invincible, another picture of Invincible at the bottom. And here is the back, big Invincible logo includes Invincible Volume 1 of the series. I'm really excited to give that a read, I've not read any of the comics yet. And so as you'll see we get a quite thick comic book with this figure. Uh, the other figures in the collection here and this looks like an image of the first release Invincible rather than the one in the box. And We'll see why in a second. Uh, 20 years at the bottom of this side, Invincible up the top. And if you want to read that right up, hit that pause button now. And yeah, let's get this figure out of the box. And so here is a re-released Invincible out of the packaging. And this is quite interesting. Uh, let's take a closer look at what we get here. First of all, we get this, I guess it's a graphic novel. It's volume one, and I think that's issues one to five. It doesn't say immediately. I'm gonna keep it in this cover, just, all right, let's get it out, let's get it out. Um, it doesn't say on the back if it's issues one to five or anything. It has this right up kind of relating to the show. Hit that pause button if you wanna read that uh, image up at the top here. And then I really like the artwork on the front, this looks great. Uh, yeah, as I said, I'm really excited to read this. Give it a wee flick through. Um, I just want to see what comics it includes. Is it going to tell us at the start here? Doesn't look like it, that's really annoying, it must do. No, okay, so I'm guessing it's issues 1 to 5, issues 1 to 6, something like that. Um, I can't see it straight away, but this is really nice. This is a really nice book good length to it. I'm really excited to read it. I'll let you know what I think probably over my Instagram, something like that, but really cool to include this. And yeah, moving on, we also get a flight stand. It says 20 years at the bottom, a wee picture of Invincible. It's got a wee peg at the bottom and it's got a nice height to it and it ports into the back of Invincible here. We see we have a hole on the body. And that's all the figure comes with, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda disappointed because the initial release came with an alternative head, I'm sure it came with numerous alternative hands, and we don't get any of that included in this re-release. I guess the biggest reason I'm disappointed is because I thought it did include that. I knew we weren't getting the alternative head, but I thought we were getting the hands, and... 
Yeah, it feels a bit disappointing with just the flight stand, really. I mean, yeah, the comic book's included, and that's awesome, but it doesn't really relate to the figure. I thought that was coming on top of the figure and the accessories, but it looks like the accessories have been axed in place of the comic book. So, yeah, I, I think this would definitely benefit from an alternative head, as we'll see the head is very plain in expression, it's very, you can't even see the mouth, let's <laughs> turn the brightness down and see if we can even see his expression here, yeah it's so undefined that you can't see the mouth at the moment but yeah as I said we could have benefited from a, an alternative head and some alternative hands, I do like how we have the fisted one an, uh, an open hand would have been really nice, we kind of have this one that looks like you could put stuff in it but an open hand, a relaxed hand, some fisted hands, some flight hands, he is a superhero, we've got the flight stand, you know he can fly so some flight hands would have been really appreciated here so yeah I'm, I'm kind of annoyed at the moment but looking at the figure it looks pretty good We've got the head sculpt here and as I mentioned the skin tone has been fixed on camera I know that might be hard to tell, we'll turn it down one more time But the skin tone is a lot more normal looking compared to that first release The first release was as white as paper And although this could probably be a wee bit more tanned It is an improvement to what we've seen before The hair is alright, I mean it could be sculpted a wee bit nicer I suppose, there's not too much sculpted detail in there, it's all one shade of black and yeah I, I don't mind the face sculpt but I would have liked that alternative head as well and then the body seems pretty standard, we get this awesome looking costume on it, I love all the costumes and Invincible, they're all pretty standard superhero looking suits and so I've always liked the look of this one and I like seeing it here on this figure. We'll get into articulation and things as we go on but there's not really much sculpted detail in here, there's no kind of mimicked fabric going on, it's all just kind of slapped on this body mould which works all right you know if this was on your shelf you're gonna know who it is just by the costume design but yeah there's there's not really much interesting going on here so yeah there's not really much to report on you know as i said we'll get to the articulation i do like how the boots look with the blue going on to the black but yeah, that, that's kind of it here with this figure, there's nothing to swap over, nothing to interchange, no nice details to take a look at, it is pretty simple. Let's say uh, compare them to some other figures. And so Diamond Select have always been in the more 7 to 8 inch scale, for that reason I've got a couple of McFarlane figures up next to Invincible here, we've got the comic Hush Superman action figure and the movie Shazam McFarlane action figure. And I think these guys scale pretty well next to one another, all the proportions are pretty similar. I will say I do think the McFarlane figures look better than the Diamond Select here, I wish they did kind of match a wee bit more but just yeah once again the skin tone, that something just about this whole figure, it's very plain, it's very just pain on the most simple body mould you've ever seen so yeah I, it looks good and my main reason for picking this figure up, having him on the shelf you're gonna see and go there's Invincible but there's not really much more to it than that and it comes even more evident when you do pose him next to some other really good figures. Another figure brand who have always been on the slightly bigger side are NECA and so we have the NECA movie Kickass figure and the NECA Homelander from the boys and once again these guys scale pretty well next to one another and these three characters would make for an insane crossover, Invincible, Boys, Kick-Ass, they all kind of have this similar superhero evil vibe to them, you know the gore aspect is up there, the violence and the humour, they all interrelate pretty well so it's pretty cool seeing these guys side by side but once again the Invincible figure just doesn't quite match up to the figures from the other brands here. And then to compare Invincible to my main collection, Marvel Legends, we can see that it is standing that bit taller, it is not in the same scale at all, but we do have the Marvel Legends VHS Cyclops figure and the Amazing Friends 3-pack Spider-Man figure. 
yeah, uh, similar colours and things, it would be cool to vibe these guys together, but as we can see, Invincible is in a different scale. And so to try and run over all the articulation on Invincible here, you can get the head move. Yeah, so his head has came off. Um, his head does not look up very far at all. For a flight figure, that is horrific. If this figure is trying to get into a flight pose, it's not happening if his head can't move off. Maybe I've actually just done myself a favour by breaking this off because now I will be able to get him in an accurate flight pose. Yeah, I'll just tack this on for poses and things. I'm not too bothered. I'll just get some pliers, pull that peg out. And yeah, it can sit on there. Not too bothered at all, but that is terrible from <laughs> Diamond Select. I paid quite a bit of money for this, trying to get it imported from America. So... Yeah, not too happy, <laughs> especially because the figure's pretty crap already. Um, can get. I'm scared this thing's just going to crumble apart now. Um, I'm not going to force anything, so the arm can go about that far out the way and get it moving all the way up and around. He's got an upper bicep swivel and a single jointed elbow there. Wrist moves backwards and forwards and will rotate round as well. Same articulation in this arm. Really, there's not too much movement here in the chest. It will rotate round a wee bit and go backwards and forwards. There really is no crunch forward though, which is such a shame. This thing would look awesome with a good ab crunch. And then the legs, you can get kicking that far forward. That far out the way. Upper thigh swivel, single jointed knee. And the foot will move backwards and forwards and pivot around as well. So yeah, the range of movement could use some work. I feel like with what Marvel Legends are releasing and things, this body mode feels quite outdated. I feel like they could really improve on the range of movement. Most importantly, just in the ab area, if they got an ab crunch moving forward and back, that would make this figure a whole lot better, especially double jointed elbows and things. And yeah, the range of movement in the head really needs to be, really needs to be improved. So, yeah, that's it for the range of movement on this thing. It's not great. And so, with the head blue tacked on there, I guess that's it for this video. And, yeah, this is probably the most disappointed that I've been with a figure in a very long time, and it goes back to just the accessories. We've been given the accessories, the alternative head, before. Why could they not be included this time around? It feels very Hasbro Marvel Legends, you know, with the whole Spidey hand situation at the moment. Um, there's accessories there that have been sculpted and released in the past. It could have been very easy to just give us them this time around and then include the comic book on top of that. But it feels like we've had the comic book instead of the accessories where I feel like the comic book should be on top of the accessories for this 20 year anniversary release. Yeah, I think just overall the figure feels very plain. It doesn't really feel like much love and attention has been put into this figure at all. I feel like there should be just way more range of movement, sculpted detail, interchangeable parts with this thing. It feels very like they've been given the Invincible license and they've just scraped by with what they could give us. Um, the range of movement's pretty bad for... Uh, if you think about the Invincible TV show and what's going on there, the, the action, the carnage that Invincible's involved in, this figure is replicating none of that, yeah, um, and just the mold, once again, it feels outdated, and of course it broke on me as well when I tried to move the head into a flight position. Ah, yeah, this kind of sucks, I'll be honest, I wouldn't buy this figure. If you're like me and you're wanting to get that invisible figure in the collection, I think we're just going to have to wait, because this isn't really it. I mean, if you're fine with paying a good chunk of money just to have the Invincible costume on your shelf, then yeah, go for it. That's kind of what I did, but I did think the figure would be better than what it is. 
I don't think this is great. I'm, I'm kind of glad that I do have that Invincible look that will be on the shelf, but I am really hoping someone gets the Invincible license pretty soon because I would love to see a more articulated, more nicely sculpted and painted Invincible figure with more interchangeable options for sure. So yeah, hate to leave the video on a bad note, but let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. While you're down there guys, if you could do me a massive favour, if you liked the video, please hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, then please hit that subscribe button. I'll leave the link to my Instagram down in the description below where I'm planning on posing this figure around. I don't really know how well it'll go, but yeah, it'd mean a lot if you could check that out. Hop over onto the Instagram page, and if you could hop over onto the YouTube page as well, check out any of my other videos, or click the recommended videos that pop up here. It would mean a lot, and it means a lot that you've watched this video right here, guys. So thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll catch you on the flip-flop later. Cheers.